Hundreds of millions of years ago, dinosaurs ruled the Earth. These days, not so much. But that doesn't mean their impact is over. The American Museum of Natural History has a massive collection of fossils, both on display and hidden underground in the Big Bone Room, where technology helps paleontologists learn new and exciting things about dinosaurs and their living descendants. So this is the big bone room, right? obviously, right, right, fairly right, massive right, bones. Right, right. But how did the Museum of Natural History acquire this kind of a collection? I mean, we've got really, really huge old fossils in here. Yeah, this represents over 100 years of collecting by our institution. And even now, uh, we still send lots of expeditions out every year. In the old days, largely when a lot of these things were collected, people would just go out and they would accumulate. They would just go out to some of the places, like most of this stuff in here is all from Wyoming. Mm. And uh, we still have an excavation there as well. But now we don't do that so much. Now we go to try to look for specific things to answer specific sets of problems. So. A lot of the work in, uh, in my lab, we work on the origin of, of uh, birds from the traditional dinosaurs. That's and mostly where your research is. That's, yeah, that's what yeah, you work on. Yeah. So I feel like when I was younger, we didn't really hear about that connection as much. So mm -hmm. is it more of a modern discovery, or is it yeah. just like the evidence well, is a, mounting? It's an old discovery that was discovered about the same time as Darwin wrote The Origin of Species. It was uh, presented by it took a while to circulate. <laughs> Thomas Huxley, but then everybody forgot about it. Uh, for oh, like a hundred years right. or so, and uh, so uh, the last 20 years, 25 years has really been a time of lots of new discoveries and also the application of lots of new techniques that we didn't really have the technology for beforehand. So, so how, have, how have some of the specimens in this room helped to sort of bolster your research when it comes to the sort of links between dinosaurs and birds? Some of these, like, uh, this is one of the the neck bones, and if you look at it, it has all these, you know, in pocketings and things like that. So, mm -hmm. if you've ever looked at like a, a chicken neck bone and stuff, yeah. but they're very complex like that too, and that's because if there was a system of air sacs, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that went through it. Makes so, them lighter. It's the same thing with these. Also, these bones, if you like do CAT scans on these bones, uh -huh. they're not these heavy, massive things that you see here. They're actually completely full of air. So as far as the history of paleontology, what kind of information could you get from these bones without having the benefit of the modern technology that you're using these days? Well, quite a lot. I mean, actually you could, you know, well, obviously put the skeletons back together. Right. And you could probably make some reasonable guesses and judgments about, uh, like that, uh, how the animals walked, how mm. fast they could go. But technology's really changed the game. Mm. I mean, we can t just tell so much more. I mean, now, for instance, we can in, we can tell how old uh, the animal was, many of these animals were when they were alive. So we know that Tyrannosaurus rex, for instance, grew to adult size in 18 years. Oh, wow. That's longer than I thought for some reason. And, well, it's pretty big. I mean, we can calculate that they were growing uh, over six pounds a day for, wow. uh, for a lot of years. What do you use to determine that kind of age? Well, we can use uh, different kinds of microscopy and different kinds of scanning. What we're doing now is we're applying just laser surface scanning mm -hmm. so that you can scan these bones and then you can either look at them on your screen or you can 3D print them and you never have to worry about taking them off the shelf again. The nice thing shape. about it is if you, when you uh, print them also you can print them at like 10% of the size if you want mm -hmm. so they're not giant, they're not heavy and they're super light. <laughs> oh yeah, that's really light. And we can just build these here. so. Uh, so you can just create upstairs. tiny little scale models of all the skeletons, yeah, and yeah, I don't see yeah, where this yeah, is going. Yeah. This is neat. Would we be able to scan one now? Yeah, sure. This is Emmanuel. Uh, he's a postdoc with me. Right. So can you teach me how to surface scan <laughs> yeah, a surface? Yeah, first. Will it show up here as I'm scanning it? Yes. Cool. So up here, okay. you push first. Um, you can see this graph over here. Mm -hmm. Let's find out if I'm <laughs> cut out for so this. Uh, I feel like I'm, oh, I'm in the red. I'm literally in the red. This is like a really specific <laughs> VR video game. Oh, I'm way in the red. It, well, the green stuff is where it's stuff that I scan. Okay. You can already see the 3D model. Yeah. Oh, wow. This, oh, come on, Maybe buddy boy. Close. You're too close. Okay. Yep. Okay. You 
can see some of the holes that he might want to fill. So I'm going to come in and sort of brush over this guy here. We have about maybe 15% of the bones in this room scanned. Let's, let's check what I got. Yeah. Please tell me that everyone gets as tangled in this as I just got. <laughs> well, sometimes we have a, like a turntable. Now you told me you have a turntable? <laughs> <laughs> so the two different colors are the two different scans you made. Okay. And you can see that it, it's rotated. Uh-huh. You have to take that rotation. And, and sort of, sort of smush it together. Yeah. Got some holes. I feel like I got this, this side feels nice. Oh, and wow, it even it even picks up like the little little mark we have on the side. That is so detailed and so specific. Yeah, and then after like you know we would turn around and then we can just then take the data and then set it up on the printer and print it overnight. Like that one over there that we printed. I mean, yeah, compared to so like nice. most things that you see when they're printed, that they have like lines on them. And they stuff do. Yeah, I was wondering because this guy's he's is a smooth yeah, boy. Yeah, because the, those are those are done by either extrusion. Uh, or by, or sometimes by actual carving of yeah. blocks and stuff. But uh, the yeah, this guy just sort of, woo, yeah, out of the goo. Yeah. I mean, yeah, kind of like human life, popping up. I mean, all life out of the goo. If there's one thing we learned at the Big Bone Room at the American Museum of Natural History, it's that every specimen has the potential to lead to the next big dinosaur discovery. I guess with technology making it so easy to scan and share data with paleontologists all across the globe, size really doesn't matter. <laughs>